greatest in the world of sports. This is Chalk Them Up. I think everybody in the building thought Breeze was going to get that ball, except for the Packers defense who jumped over that line. Um, but, uh, I mean, do you like seeing those kind of plays out of a coach like Sean Payton who maybe tries to do the unpredictable? I mean, it's worked in the past um, in the Super Bowl. Yeah, um, you know, Peyton's got a great playbook. He's a real smart guy. Sometimes the defense makes plays, and um, I'm not one of those who say absolutely that something was the wrong call, absolutely something was the right call. I think it's, I think when you micromanage something like that, you could look at any time in any game and say somebody made an idiotic move. Now, I'm all for saying that if it's absolutely obvious that, that something was wrong. Um, but on neither of those calls can I look at them. I mean, what what the situation here is at the goal line, if the defense guesses right based on your tendencies, which they did obviously here, you know, they're going to charge through Knicks and Evans and Kruitz and make sure that, uh, that, you're, that the back doesn't have any room to breathe, and that's exactly what happened in that case. Peter, I want to stay in the north a little bit and talk about our hometown team, the Chicago Bears, and just want to kind of get a good idea of the unfortunate situations the Bears have put themselves in the past couple of months with the draft day debacle between the Ravens and this situation with Chester Taylor being released or his agent thinking he's being released and the Bears saying, no, Chester Taylor is not released. Has their reputation around the league kind of taken a hit where people really may not want to do business with them? issue on draft day um the ravens um uh, believe me are still convinced that uh that they were done wrong uh, in this case but when it comes time to make a trade next year the bears are sitting in a position um you know to make a trade and somebody wants their pick um the ravens won't try to go up and get it or go down and get it but other teams will. People have to have short memories in this league or else somebody would always be mad at somebody else. I mean, the question becomes whether some team is going to uh, be, be hesitant to take their word on something. I think that's a more dangerous thing, but there's going to be enough safeguards in place about making a draft day trade. And the Bears know right now that that their honor in this has been questioned, so they're not going to be fooling around with this at all anymore. Whatever they tell anybody next year on draft day will be words to live by, I'm sure. We're listening to Chalk Them Up on WPGU 1071. We're joined by Senior Sports Illustrated columnist Peter King. Um, so sticking with the Bears a little bit, um, <clears throat> this week Lance Briggs, um, as you probably know, the uniform change, um, whether the league would allow him to wear the stars and stripes on his cleats. Um, Skip Bayless was saying that he would he disagreed with <clears throat> the uniform switch. Um, what do you, would you, as Commissioner Goodell, have allowed this kind of change, allowed Lance Briggs to wear it? I mean, really, I mean, when you think about it, you know, the bottom line is, unless you're disrespecting um, the uniform, uh, the league, all that stuff, I think it's silly to spend a lot of time concerned about things like, you know, the uniform switch and, uh, and all that. I mean, I remember a few years ago when Peyton Manning wanted to wear uh, high tops in honor of Johnny Unitas after he died, and the league said no, and that's ridiculous. It's, it's micromanaging something that doesn't need to be micromanaged. Peter, I want to thank you for coming on, for joining us. You've been an excellent guest. Um, before we let you go, today obviously is uh, 9-11, a uh, big day of remembrance in our country's history. Um, as a sports journalist, what do you remember most about the attacks and sports' role in bringing the country into a new place uh, after such devastation? And I remember sitting with Paul Tagliabue for Sports Illustrated a couple days after he decided... Uh, to uh, call the games that weekend. And uh, Paul Tagliabue was as, uh, uh, you know, taciturn and uh, tough and, you know, so 
sort of fearless and unblinking as a sports commissioner could be. And that day, Paul Tagliabue was sitting in his office. It was a Saturday morning in, uh, in, in Manhattan. After the attacks that day, he started crying. And I said, wow. And I think a lot of people around in different parts of the country who didn't experience that. I mean, Tagliabue lived in Manhattan with his wife, who didn't experience the horror of what it was like to walk around and for days afterwards and still get soot in your mouth from the attacks. You don't know where it's coming from, but yet you do know where it's coming from. So that was probably the most emotional thing I, I remember about it. And, and uh, it's a good thing that America is remembering as America needs to. Peter, once again, thank you for coming on. You're the best at what you do, and uh, enjoy the rest of week one. Hey, really appreciate taking the time to talk to me. Thanks. Thanks, Peter. Bye.